Well, hello, everybody. Great to see you. Come on in, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. It's about 3.30 uh, in the afternoon here on the East Coast. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me just lower that quickly. It is so wonderful to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Great to see you. Come on in. Come on, come on. Share this out with somebody. Somebody said, loving your book. Wow. Now, you made my day right now. Pastor Mickey Bell, I see you, sir. Thank God. Thank God for you, Pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me just block that uh, that person right there because, you know, whoever just said false prophet, they totally don't want you to get this word. Amen. Flip this. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to help somebody who has received a personal prophetic word. I'm not talking about Bible prophecy. Uh, that can never, ever, ever change. That is non-negotiable. The word of God said it. He spoke it forth. It's going to come to pass. And it won't matter what, what anybody says. And we're going to get into that briefly. Amen. But I'm talking about a personal prophetic word. I want to talk to some people who maybe have had a, a prophet prophesy over you. Maybe the Lord has used a prophet to give you a personal prophetic. Now, I'm also not talking about the corporate decrees that I very often release in my ministry. You know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, right here on Periscope. Sometimes there will be corporate prophetic decrees when, when a season is changing or when the Lord wishes. Please listen carefully. When the Lord will. I feel the anointing of the Lord so quickly. Thank you, Jesus. So when God wishes to move in a very specific way within the congregation of a specific ministry, uh, with under the cat of a specific ministry, he will very often have the prophet or the pastor, because there's a lot of prophetic pastors and, and apostles, amen, and the Lord will have those people to release corporate prophetic decrees. This includes something that the Lord wishes to take place for that particular group of people. It might be a region. It might be a ministry. All right. Amen. Now that does not guarantee that everybody's going to uh, get hit with it or that everybody is going to be the recipient of that personal or the, of that corporate prophetic decree, however, and we're going to get into some of the reasons why, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about Bible prophecy. The word of God in the Bible can never, ever, ever be changed. Sorry, devil. Oh, I know you want to change it. I know you come up with lies. I, I know the dun, yeah, yeah, yada, yada. We know the devil what would love to change, uh, but, but Bible prophecy cannot be changed. Corporate decrees, we're not talking about a corporate decree either. We're talking about a specific personal prophetic word that the Lord has given you and he has sent a prophet into your life or he has uh, in some way released that word to you and now you have a word. It's about you. It's about your life. It's about your family. It's about a situation, whatever it's about, but it's for you and you alone. You can't share it with anybody else. God told you something specific about you, about your future, about his plan, about his will for you in particular. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about personal uh, prophetic words. And I just want to help somebody now uh, because we're going to talk about when you can expect that thing to come to pass. Now, if it's a good word, <laughs> we're going to get into it already. If it's a good word that you want to know, come on, somebody, that's exactly what you want to know. You're, you, you, you're saying to the Lord, giddy up, Jesus. That sounds amazing. Love it. I'll take it. Uh, when? When? Right? So if it's a good word, you want to know when you can expect that thing to show up and bless you. All right, and so we're going, to we're going to focus on when it is a good word and you want it to come to pass. We're going to go ahead and get into this. Now, I'm going to tell you, listen, um, this word that I'm about to release to you was not even on my radar this morning, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, this whole day has been highly prophetic. I didn't plan on doing any of the stuff I've done so far, praise God. But when you are uh, working for the Lord and you, you, are, you, you have been imbued with a Holy Ghost supernatural pager, 
then when your pager goes off, you have to be obedient. Amen. So that's what happened with that pro with that word that I released on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I don't know if you saw it. It was like a 30 second video. We're not going to talk about that, but it was just like a 30 second snippet. And I had to be obedient. I heard the Holy Ghost say, somebody needs us. I'll tell you, my husband was in the office. We were doing ministry business this morning. I had just made fresh Starbucks coffee. <laughs> I just made fresh coffee. Amen. But when I leave my husband in business and I leave my coffee to get cold, I knew that the Lord needed that word to be released. I said, God, I just know there's going to be somebody. And sure enough, go look for yourself. How many people said, Prophet Whitaker, I needed this so badly. This literally, some people actually said, this word stopped me in my tracks and prevented me from making some mistakes on today. So it's going to be the same with this word that I'm about to release to you right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I believe there are some people who really need to get this. Now, if you want my personal prophetic suspicion, here it is. And I know that you're not asking me, but if you want my personal prophetic suspicion, why did the Lord arrest my spirit to do this? I wasn't planning on this today whatsoever. Uh, I believe that there are some people who are going to hear this uh, video, whether you are live, you might be watching on the web, you might catch this on the replay, and maybe you're going to catch it on YouTube, whatever, however you're going to get it, or maybe somebody listening uh, right now, you're going to tell somebody what I said uh, from the word of God. So let's just, let's edit that. You're going to tell somebody what God said. And it's going to help you to bring your word to pass. I suspect, hallelujah, Jesus, I suspect there are some people listening who are currently in danger of the Lord potentially postponing their uh, prophetic word, the manifestation of their personal word, or uh, in danger of the Lord just saying, all right, well, that's off. Call it off, angels. Uh-uh, that, that, that's not going to work. Not going to work for them. They're, they're not ready. They're, they don't want to get ready. So, so I believe, and this is just my personal suspicion, praise God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I believe that God is has staged a supernatural intervention for some of y'all because some people listening have received a personal prophetic word and he just wants to help you know what you got to know and do what you must do so that that thing can come to pass. Because no, a personal prophetic word is not like Bible prophecy. It is not guaranteed. Sorry, but we're going to get into this. The good news is you can help to bring it to pass. Amen. I've seen it more time. If I told you how many times I've seen it, I, I promise you it would sound like I'm bragging, but I'm not bragging about me. I'm bragging on God because when he gives me a word, the, the reason I'm confident to say these things to complete strangers, I don't know how, these people, but the reason I'm confident is because God has shown me so many times so that I'm totally, I trust him. Amen. All right, so let's get into this. For those who don't know me, my name is Prophet Jolyn Whitaker. I am in full-time prophetic ministry. Um, from the time I was a baby, this is real quick. From the time I was a baby, my life has been under attack because the devil always tries to shut the mouths of the prophets. Uh, when I was uh, very, very young, eight years old, as a matter of fact, I told my mother that God was going to use me to touch people all over the world. But I, I'll never forget. She looked at me like either my daughter is telling the truth and that's very cool or she has a vivid imagination when I was 11 years old this is the first time I can remember anyway when I was 11 years old I began to have forensically accurate prophetic dreams visions and words that would manifest uh, very often is within one day all right now that's just the first time that I can remember that happening praise God that's enough about me for anybody who was wondering or just you know who is this woman talking to me right now there you go. So, but if you want to know more about me, my ministry, who we are, what we do, you can hit the link in my bio, but it's not about me. It's about King Jesus always. It's always about the kingdom of God. Amen. 
And on today, the Lord wants me to talk to you about personal prophetic words and, and uh, when you can expect your word to come to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray super quickly. And then I want to get into the, the information that God gave me. Amen. Father God, we, we come before you on today in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, and we give you glory first and foremost, God. We exalt you in a land and a culture, a, a global culture, where people are just detracting you, uh, defaming you, disrespecting you, redefining you. God, we would never do any such ridiculous thing. We love you just as you are. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You are the Alpha and the Omega, O oh God. You are El Shaddai. You are our God and we worship you on today. Father, I just ask that you bless me and indwell me with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that I may speak forth this word in a way that will please you, a way that will uh, bless you, a way that will bring glory to your name, O oh God, and in a way that's going to benefit and bless the people that you cause to hear this, this video, O oh God, and I'm careful to give you and only you the glory, Father. Because only you deserve the glory. Father, bless everybody listening on today. Uh, let your, your favor just surround them like a shield, oh God. Release blessings into their life that's just going to chase them down and overtake them, oh God. Do it for their blessing and for your glory, God. I love you. I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go. If you are um, one of those people who likes to take notes, grab your notebook, all right, because you want to write some stuff down. Get a napkin. Get out. Fire up your whiteboard. Uh, <laughs> get some construction paper. Whatever you want to do. Grab your journal. Uh, but but you you're gonna want to take notes if you like to do so. However, if you just prefer to just listen and absorb, and you just want to kind of take it in, that's cool. You can certainly kick back, uh, absorb the word, enjoy the broadcast. I'm going to leave it up for the replay, but I'm also going to go ahead and put it on my YouTube channel so you'll be able to watch it later on and go through it more carefully uh, regarding the scriptures, etc. if you choose to do so. I must hydrate. And now we're going to go forth. All right. So, and I have a band-aid on one finger, so I'm really trying, I'm, I'm getting, it's going to be funky at work, my computer here. But so bear with me, because I have my Bible, I have some notes that I wrote down, but I also have some things that I typed up too, uh, so that I can expedite the, the release of this word, amen. But let's go ahead and get started. You want to know, when will your prophetic word come to pass? When is it going to happen? When can you expect to see this thing come to pass? When is God going to really just, you know, show up and, and bring it all together in your life? And the answer is at the correct time. At the correct time. That's the short answer. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging with just that. Uh, but when all conditions are appropriate and correct... When all conditions are appropriate and correct, the Lord will bring the word, the personal prophetic word to pass. There is a time and a season for everything. How many know that a blessing given to you too soon when you are not ready for it, when you are not equipped for it, when, when you're not where you should be mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that blessing will feel like a curse if you're not ready for it. So the Lord is going to bring that personal prophetic word to pass for you at the correct time. Amen. When all conditions are appropriate and correct. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, we're going to get into it deeper in a moment, but there is a correct time for everything. And many people over the years have asked me, they've said, you know, they, they, when's it going to happen, uh, prophet? You know, this is what you said. This is what another prophet said. Do you know when this is going to happen? So I want to very quickly highlight some high level stuff. All right. Uh, very high level things because these are things you need to know if you are waiting on uh, a prophetic word to come to pass. Point number one. Are you ready? Point number one. Hey, you got to share this before we get into it. Share this. Swipe to the right on an iPhone. Swipe up on an Android. If you have one of the newer phones, you got those little three uh, cute little buttons down there. Right, right down there. Zoom down there. Right over there. 
work your buttons, all right? And thank you for thank you in advance for the shares. I'm not gonna I'm not promoting myself whatsoever, in case you haven't noticed. But I want to promote this message. I want to promote the truth of the Lord. Uh, and, and when God gives me a message, it's it's gonna be important. So I must be obedient. I know this is gonna bless you. It might bless somebody else. Let's go ahead and share. And I thank you for the shares. Praise God. So point number one. This is very important. Check this out. Personal prophecy is a completely different utterance than Bible prophecy. Matter of fact, you can't even compare the two, okay? Bible prophecy is one thing. That is the infallible word of God. It's going to come to pass. Now, when Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 says that God's word will not return to him void, that's referring to God's promises in the Bible, which all of which are conditional. Sorry, somebody. <laughs> okay, but all of which are conditional. I mean, hello, somebody. Salvation, mercy, grace, these things are free and available to everybody. But accessing God's benevolence, accessing his storehouse of riches, accessing uh, your, your inheritance as a Christian, as a child of God, that's another level altogether. Those promises are conditional. And for, for the people who are just like, well, wait, what? Listen, as a parent, I don't know if you have any kids, but as a parent, I will never reward uh, my children with blessing and privilege if they are disrespectful and disobedient to me. If they are rebellious, if they are outwardly uh, rebellious and disrespectful and disobedient, why in the world would I release privilege to them? Why in the world would I reward them? It is the exact same way to God. I do not dole out gifts. I'm not talking about the, the free gift of salvation. I'm not talking about the Lord's mercies, which are new every morning. I'm not talking about God's willingness, his benevolent willingness to meet you where you are and bring you into a new season anytime you want. I don't know what I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the benevolence of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. I'm talking about his riches through Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about that Ephesians 3.20 blessing. We're talking about that Malachi 3 and 10 blessing. We'll throw in Philippians 4.19 just for good measure. All right, so those, those things are, are the promises of God, all of which are conditional. But we're not talking about promises. We're talking about prophecy, all right? Uh, the future, what's coming down the line in the future, what is going to happen in the future, what God wants to bring to pass in the future. And what you need to know is that it, in, in discussing prophecy, what, what the Lord wants to bring to pass in the future, Isaiah 55 and 11 refers to both the promises of God and the prophecies of God as they, as they refer to Bible prophecy. The promises of God found in the Bible. The prophecies of, of God found in the Bible. That's what that scripture is referring to. All right. Bible prophecy cannot be changed. It will come to pass no matter what. It will happen just as God said. And there is nothing that anybody can do to stop it. Okay. Much to the chagrin of the enemy camp. No, too bad. Satan loses. Uh, Jesus wins uh, because the manifestation of Bible prophecy is going to happen. All right. With my band-aid here, I'm trying to work this. Work my computer. Maybe I got to take the band-aid off. All right, goodbye, band-aid. All right, so now what about personal prophecy? What about that? What about a scenario where, you know, as I said at the top of the broadcast, what about the scenario where a prophet gave you a word, the Lord sent a prophet into your life, or you petitioned the prophet for a word, and, he's, and he or she says, as a matter of fact, I do hear the voice of the Lord for you. As a matter of fact, here's what the Lord is telling me to tell you at this particular moment in your life. What about that word? What about that personal prophetic word? All right, I want to give you... For those who have a word and now you're waiting to, to know, you want to know when you can expect it to come to pass. I want to show you an example in the Bible found in Isaiah chapter 38. All my, all my ministry people are going to, and, and all my good Bible readers are going to know exactly where I'm going with this. Isaiah chapter 38. This is 
Oh my goodness, the mind-blowing story, the mind-blowing account of the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, who was sent to go prophesy to King Hezekiah, all right? Check this out. Now, I want to invite you to listen, all right, because I'm going to help somebody, and this is going to speak to you, so I really want to invite you to listen. Praise God. In Isaiah chapter 38 and 1, the Lord instructs the prophet Isaiah to go tell King Hezekiah, dude, your days are numbered, you're sick as a dog, sorry to, sorry to be the one to be the bearer of bad news, but dude, you're about to die. Get your house in order, you ain't going to make it. Okay, and it was Isaiah's job to tell King Hezekiah that lovely little nugget of news. But watch this in verse two. Okay, same chapter, Isaiah 38 in verse two. Hezekiah, you know, he, he inevitably, what would you do? He inevitably, he's like, no, 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 Lord. And he went and he prayed. Okay, and he went and he prayed. He came into a place of supplication. He sought the Lord. And then he made a case for himself. He made a case for himself. He said, God, you know what? Listen, you got to remember my dedication to you, Lord. Lord, you got to remember all the good stuff. God, I don't deserve this. I've been a good servant of you. Can, can, you, can you cut me some slack, Lord? Is there any way we can reverse this, God? And so then it's verses two and three. Isaiah 38, and then boom, in verse 4, now here the prophet Isaiah is outside, he dropped off that bomb, and, and poor King Hezekiah's life dropped the bomb, and then he said, all right, well, I'm out, you know, I, I, gotta, I gotta go, gotta, gotta, gotta jet, so he, he leaves, you know, because he's gotta bounce, Isaiah is outside, the Lord hears uh, the king's prayer and petition, arrests the prophet and says, actually, uh, Isaiah, get right back in there. I changed my mind. So Isaiah goes back and he tells King Hezekiah, your prayer has been heard. Your prayer has been answered. The Lord is going to grant you more years. He's going to grant you more time. You're not going to die. You were. You were about to be gone, baby, gone. But now the Lord's heard you. He's changed his mind. So what happened there? A word of personal prophecy was issued forth. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah didn't like it. He didn't receive, he did not want to receive that if at all possible. And he advocated for himself. This is a word for somebody listening right now. Please listen. If you feel that you are at a point in your life or in your walk with Jesus where you know that you, you know, you've made some mistakes and you haven't been exactly obedient and you haven't been exactly repentant and, and the Holy Spirit's been bearing witness to you and giving you little checks in your spirit and you're like, oh man, I know I don't need to be doing this anymore. I, I know God is calling me out of all that mess I, I know and, and but you've been ignoring that and you have not come into a place of repentance I want to encourage you to, to do two things right away number one go into a place of repentance which means that you turn away it means you leave you turn away from that bad thing that that whatever the Lord has checked you on the sin you turn away from the sin and then you turn to Jesus and you don't go back so I want to encourage you to repent then I also encourage you to make a case for yourself. Once you come into a place of repentance, go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, I'll admit it. I'm a sinner. I, I've been a hot mess on toast. I don't even know where I got that from, but that's hilarious. I've been a hot mess on toast. But God, I'm getting it together. I'm trying hard. Will you have mercy? If there are any blessings that have been held back for me because I've been that hot mess on Toast. If there's anything you've held back from me, Lord, because I wasn't ready. If there's anything that you did not release to me because I didn't deserve it yet. If there's any blessing that you desired to give me, but I was blocking myself actually. God, I ask you to look down from heaven right now and see that I am ready. See that I am working hard to bring myself into alignment with you. Will you have mercy, God? Will you release your blessing? So that's what I encourage for anybody under the sound of my voice who feels like you might have been blocking yourself. Amen. But let's go ahead and continue forward. All right. So that is an excellent example of how the prophet was used to give a personal prophetic word that was not good. 
but Hezekiah was able to advocate for himself and receive immediate reprieve. And matter of fact, he received a reversal on that word. Amen. But I want to show you one more example because we want to talk about how you can um, support the manifestation of a good or a blessing uh, that came to you through a prophetic word. Amen. So the second example is out of 1 Samuel chapter 16. All right. David is anointed by the prophet Samuel to become king, all right? Now, this will mess up the whole theology of people who believe, uh, you've heard me say this before, maybe, but this will mess, mess, mess you up. Uh, if you believe that prophecy, personal prophecy, only comes to confirm something you, you already know, that a personal prophetic word from a prophet it will only confirm what you already knew anyway. No, sorry, because not only did Hezekiah have no clue that he was about to bite the dust until Isaiah came in, come through Holy Ghost, not, but also David, who's out there in the field playing with his animals, writing songs, I don't know, okay, he also had no clue that the Lord was going to choose him to be king until the prophet came into his life and made that announcement. So yes, a, an authentic Holy Spirit inhabited mm, prophetic word issued straight from the throne of God can be prophetic Rhema. It can be a brand new word, a fresh word, a now word. It can be a personal revelation. And once again, I cannot tell you how many people the Lord has used me to do both. Uh, he's used me to confirm something that somebody already knew, but he's also used me and other people I know to give brand new revelations about a person to a person. And, and then, you know, they're off to the races. Um, okay, so I feel like we got to get out of that because that's potentially a rabbit hole I could go down into. But but there it is. So no, a, a personal prophetic word does not always uh, come to solely confirm what you already knew. Sometimes the Lord's going to tell you something brand new that you need to know. And it, it can very often be a brand new on time now word, a revelation that you did not know prior to the prophet releasing it to you. But now here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David is anointed by uh, by Samuel to become king. Well, hold up now. How's that going to work? Because uh, Saul is already king. All right. Saul has already been made king. And as a matter of fact, Saul is Saul's king because they have been prophesied for him to be king. So how's that going to work? Scroll back, 1 Samuel 15, 35. 1 Samuel 15, 35, we don't have time to go into the whole story, but Saul had become a hot mess on toast. Let's just put it like that, all right, for the, for the sake of time. He had been disobedient. He had been inappropriate. He had, he had gone against the word of the Lord. He had really just, hey, I'm going to read it to you from the Bible. The Lord regretted he had made Saul king over Israel. He regretted it. The Lord was watching Saul, watching him, checking out his behavior, checking out his performances, king, and saying, you know what? Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. I'm pulling the plug on this one. Uh, yes, I, I had my prophet prophesy for that man to be, to be king. But he's not, he's not rising to the occasion. I'm not pleased with him. I'm not, uh, nope, pull the plug. That prophecy is now null and void. All right, so... So there's that. Let's see, where am I with my notes? All right, so we learned so far that you can advocate for yourself to release blessings, the manifestation of a blessing or a prophetic word that has not yet come to pass. You can bring yourself into alignment with the Lord. You can come into repentance and you can you can then go to the Lord and make a, try to make a case for yourself and get that manifestation to be released to you. Uh, but you can also have been given a prophetic word. You can also have received a prophetic word and have the Lord look at you and say, no, mm -mm. now we're going to pull the plug on that one. Maybe not forever. Maybe it's going to be postponed or maybe it's going to become null and void, but the Lord can and he will 
say no. And I know that's going to be something that a lot of people don't want to hear. But the good news is the Lord tells us exactly what we need to do in the Bible to support the manifestation of a personal prophetic word. Let, let me go ahead. I'm done some very quick points with you. All right. This is a great point to share if you have not done so yet, because I'm going to get to what I call like a formula. You know, I'm big on formulas, right? So uh, because if you have the right formula, it'll do something. If you hit the right formula, the right sequence, it'll it, something will happen. So the Lord showed me this formula and I want to share it with you because it's going to help you if you have a personal word to help manifest, expedite that thing in your life. All right, number one, okay, point number one, you want to align yourself with the word of God. You want to come into a place of submission and obedience to Jesus. Let me give you some Bible for this, all right? Exodus 19 and 5, can, can somebody pop these scriptures up? That would be amazing. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 says, now if you obey me fully, not partially, fully, and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. John chapter 15 verse 9 says, as the father has, this is Jesus talking, as the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Watch this. Continue ye in my love. As the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. And then he drops it. Continue in my love. A lot of people backslide, but still hope their prophetic word is going to manifest. E I don't know about that, honey. I, I wouldn't. I, uh, uh, a lot of people uh, say they love God, they love the Lord, they love Jesus, but they are not living in a lifestyle that is a testimony to Jesus. As a matter of fact, they're in rebellion. They're in. They're in. They're in reckless living. All right. But Jesus makes it clear here that you have to continue in His love. Let me give you some more Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. We demolish arguments, catch this, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Now, now here's the bomb. And we, well actually the whole scripture is bomb. And here's our point. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 5. Take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, you must be living in alignment with the word of God. Revelation chapter 14 and 12, this, that scripture calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. So a prophet might have given you a prophetic word, but if you are not keeping the commandments, if you have not remained faithful to Jesus, there it is. All right, now watch this. Um, not not to not to beat a dead horse, as they say, but uh, I have seen prophetic words not come to pass, uh, and I've known that it is because personal prophetic words, and I've known that it's because God's not going to allow it. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and show you exactly what I mean. Now we've already looked at these examples from the Bible, but I want to give you some personal ones. Praise God! Either the word is going to be held off, or it was postponed, or perhaps God declared it null and void altogether. As as with the case of former King Saul, but a few years ago, listen to me please, a few years ago, the Lord used me to release a prophetic word um, to an individual um, who had just come through a divorce. The divorce was not their choice. Her, it was not this individual's choice. Uh, their former spouse had sought the divorce. They had gone through uh, counseling with their pastor. They had uh, really, uh, one of them had really tried hard to salvage the marriage, but it didn't last. And the, and the spouse still walked away no matter what. Well, the Lord used me to release a word to the one faithful spouse. And the word was this. I'll never forget it because I'll tell you why in a moment. So the word was, 
Uh, you are going to be renewed. You are going to be restored. Uh, God is going to heal your heart. He's going to bring you into a place of, of renewal. He's going to bring you to restoration. You will marry again. You will find love again. You will have happiness again. You are going to move out of this home. The person that you are going to marry in the future is going to be a love, wonderful uh, man of God. You're going to have a new residence. You're going to have a new life. And the Lord's going to bring you into a new season and just like Job saith the Lord your latter years will be greater than your former years and all of this current pain is going to be washed away uh, by the blood as the Lord pulls you into waves of change beautiful word right all right how do I even say this and I'm not going to give any personal details I gave a lot, but I'm not saying names. Praise God. I'm not saying what the state that they lived in. Praise the Lord. All right. So recently, not too long ago whatsoever, but recently I had the opportunity to actually talk to uh, this individual and, 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 and they wanted to know when that might happen. But in, when the manifestation of that word might come to pass, do you know, prophet, when I can expect this to happen? Because I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. But in the course of our conversation, and it was a conversation, praise God, and I really believe that the Lord allowed me to have this encounter with this person one more time, one more encounter, so that I could see this firsthand and hear from him firsthand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the course of the conversation, in answer to her question, I said, well, how are you doing? Tell me, tell me how you're doing right now, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, how you doing, how, how's, how's life? And this individual had left church um, deliberately. Uh, out of her own words, she said, I'm, I, I'm mad at God. I'm struggling. I'm really mad at God for not saving my marriage when he could have. So there was that. Then in the course of the conversation, she admitted that she could not help herself. She continued to stalk her ex's uh, social media sites, even to the point of creating a, uh, let's not even go, <laughs> let's not even go there because that's way too much information, but she was stalking this, this person. All right. Ah, struggling with an addiction which I understood how that came about because she was in a lot of pain and she was trying to numb things out. But I could see that she was certainly not on the path to receiving the manifestation of that word. Because when you are, number one, mad at God so much so that you are now in defiance, you won't go to church. You're not serving. You're not praising. You're not praying. Quote, I can't even pray. All right. So now you're in defiance. Now you are also um, doing some stalking stuff, which included, I won't go into detail, but it included a lot of um, uh, dishonest behavior. Now, let's put it like that. So, so there was some dishonesty, deliberate dishonesty. And now we are struggling with an addiction as well. And I knew right away that the Lord was going to need to see something else before he authorized the fulfillment of that prophetic word. Now, at the time, I did not hear from the Lord that the word had been declared null and void. At the time, I did not hear the Holy Spirit say, I have, this word has been retracted. As a matter of fact, what I heard was that I was to give a warning, okay, some encouragement, some motivational encouragement, okay, some encouragement, some motivation, and a warning. You are in jeopardy of this not coming to pass if you do not change your course and you have to do it. You have to make the decision to do it. There's, I can't do it for you. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, brother. Oh, I know it's hard, but yeah, if you go into church... If you submit to the Lord, if you come to a place of obedience, he'll heal you, he'll restore you, he'll do all the things he said he was going to do. He'll restore your mind, he'll heal your heart. But when you say that you're mad at God and you won't pray, you won't, you won't even go to church, 
now you have positioned yourself in a in a stance of uh, um, deliberate disobedience and defiance. And that's a very slippery slope to be on when it comes to God. Because I could see and I heard the Holy Spirit uh, tell uh, that there was no way the Lord was going to release that man of God into this individual's life when number one, she's not in good standing with him. Number two, she is an active rebellion rebellion. Number three, she's not over her ex. She had, and now, uh, how, uh, how long had it been? Years. Years. Just a couple years, probably? No, 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 no. Five years? Five? Maybe even, maybe a little bit more, because I don't know the exact dates, but a long time, all right? So you are not over. You are still engaging in this stuff. And now we've turned to some substance abuse in order to make ourselves feel better when we knew at one point in our lives that, that the, 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 the healing that we need for mind, body, and spirit is through Christ Jesus. So I knew there was no way, listen to me carefully, that the Lord was going to authorize the fulfillment of that personal prophetic word because that woman would have absolutely destroyed the man of God had he released him into her life. Couldn't he fix her? Wasn't he maybe what she needed? Absolutely not. Because he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You have to be wife material when, when the spouse finds you. Now, God is not saying that he needs us to be perfect. I want to make this very clear. The Lord is not telling you on today that he needs you to be picture perfect. What he's telling you on today is that he needs to see you trying. He needs to see you committed. He needs to see you making a sustained effort. What does that mean, prophet? A sustained effort is you're making an effort and then you continue making an effort. You don't make an effort for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or a month. No, you continue making an effort. If you slip up and fall, if you slip up and backslide, you repent and you go to the Lord and you continue making progress because you know that you got a word and you need that word to come to pass and you cannot allow your future to come into jeopardy. All right, now, if you're just joining the broadcast, we have already established that, um, and I don't have time to review it completely, and I'm not going to do it to the people who've been with me um, from the top of the broadcast, but we've already established that um, not only is Bible prophecy a completely different thing from, from personal prophecy, Bible prophecy is infallible, non-negotiable, it's going to come to pass. Personal prophecy, I don't care what anybody tells you, as a prophet of the Lord, I'm going to tell you the truth. Personal prophecy is subject to change. King Hezekiah was informed by the prophet Isaiah that he was going to die, and the Lord reversed that prophecy. Uh, David, future King David, was informed by the prophet Samuel that he was going to become king, but that first re, uh, required the Lord to reverse a prophecy, to, to uh, declare null and void a prophecy that was spoken over somebody else. So God will postpone or cancel a personal prophetic word if the individual in question can't receive it, won't receive it, isn't ready, okay? And we're going to go a little bit deeper into this. Amen, amen, amen. All right, let me give you another very quick example, okay? I'll make this one fast because that first example was deep. Um, several years ago, once again, several years ago, the Lord had me prophesy to somebody about a job, a career, and some of the things that were going to happen according to their destiny. Amen. But it required some, some things. It required coming into alignment with God's principles. It required um, some additional training. It required, and the training really was only to develop some discipline and all of that. But this individual literally could not see it and kept on sending me messages I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it. I, I just don't see this. I just never saw this. I just, I don't know how, like, how would this even happen? When will it happen? But, but, but wait, how will it happen? Because where I am right now, and I'm like, look, 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 you can't look at where you are now. God is trying to tell you where he wants to take you. It's not contingent upon where you are now. It's not even contingent on your understanding it. You don't have to comprehend it. I need you to believe it and receive it. Because if you believe it and receive it, no matter how cray cray it sounds, come on somebody, then the Lord knows you've been renewed by the transforming of your mind and God knows that you're not going to be a volatile individual, that you have faith. 
and, and to this day, so I believe so as far as I know, that has not come to pass either because of the faith issue and the obedience issue. Now, I'm giving you two examples. I'm not including the hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds all right, maybe not that many hundreds, but I'm not including the hundreds of prophecies that the Lord has used me um, to, to speak forth and have manifested. And I'm not bragging because I'm just a, I promise you, I'm just a random individual that the Lord decided. He said, you know what? I, I know that she's crazy enough to listen to me and say anything, so I'll talk to her. And there are others like me all over the world. Amen. Because prophets and apostles are back for the last days. Sorry if that also messes with your theology. That's another scope for another day but we're here okay wrap your arms around it or don't if you don't want to but then you gotta take it up with God you know when you see him but 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 I am not bragging on myself or my ability because it's nothing to do with my ability it's an anointing it's a prophetic anointing anybody the Lord anoints uh, to be a prophet will be able to prophesy with accuracy okay he could use a tree to prophesy with accuracy it's not about Jolene Whitaker it's about the vessel having the anointing all right if he gave you a prophetic anointing you would also be uh, accurate with forensic precision because that is how God is so I, I, I don't have time to sit here and tell you the literal hundreds of, of personal prophetic words that God has had me to tell people and John if you're on this broadcast say something because you got to be my witness my husband and I have been on a beach in a restaurant in Walmart on the road just I could I could tell you so many places where the Lord has said tell this person that tell that person this right okay and it, so so and things happen so so we're not going to talk about all the ones that have come to pass I want to show you the factors that exist that would contribute to to a word not coming to pass because I want to help you position yourself to receive. So number one, point number one is you bring yourself in alignment with the word of God. We have established Exodus 19 and 5, John 15 and 9, Second Corinthians 10 and 5, Revelation 14 and 12. God needs you to be obedient obedience is better than sacrifice he needs you to be obedient to the word not just the stuff you like not just the things that feel right to you no you have to be obedient to the word um somebody very recently said regard on the matter regarding going to church uh well uh the holy spirit has not told me that i need to go to church so therefore uh thank you for that advice but mm, doesn't apply to me whoa whoa hold on now you better go to prayer immediately on that because the Bible makes it very clear that we are a part of the body and that you as a Christian are expected to take your place in the body of Christ. You are escorting yourself out of too many blessings for me to even talk about right now from the word of God. It's not a suggestion. It is a commandment. All right, so you need to obey the scriptures. God has all of these things in place because he loves us. He wants to prosper us. Amen. Praise God. Let's move forward. Number two begin to pr uh, prepare for the word begin to prepare for the word um we've heard people say before uh, that we we should prepare for what we pray for now that makes a lot of sense prepare for the thing you're praying for amen prepare for it watch this james chapter 1 verse 17 says Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Hebrews 13 and 9 says, Jesus Christ is the same to yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. So you need to be seeking the Lord and you need to be preparing for the manifestation of that word. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. Preparation is incredibly important. It allows the Lord to to look down and see that number one, you took it seriously, and you're not just sitting back and waiting. You're not just sitting back and passively waiting for the the word to just show up in your life like a like 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 a supernatural UPS delivery. I don't know. Okay, but you are taking initiative. You are doing all that you can within your personal power to get yourself ready. So that when the Lord decides to open the windows and let that blessing come down and let the word manifest, you are going to be ready, baby. Now, I want to, I want to show you something super fast. All right, stay with me. 
over the past year and a half, yeah, about a year and a half, the Lord has used three pro three prophets to prophesy to me. All right? Now, actually one I believe John and I talked about it the other night. We actually believe that he was an angel. That's another scope. Like my husband and I both agree, oh no, 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 that had to be an angel. But the Lord uh, released three prophetic words to me. All three of them were completely identical. All right? But listen, the irony, and this is a word for somebody, all right? This this is a little off topic, but it's going to be an important word. Listen to me carefully. The irony is I wasn't even seeking a word. I wasn't trying to get a word. I wasn't pursuing a word. I wasn't trying to seek out a prophet. I wasn't asking for a word. God knew that he wanted to tell me something, and he sent those words to me. They came looking for me. They sought me out. Uh... One of them we really know was an angel. The other two, I don't even know the people. Okay? So but when the Lord wants to give you a word, and this is for, for all, my, all my prophet hoppers. This is for all my prophet hoppers. Um, for the people on the broadcast who you just, you, you are compelled to just follow all these prophets because you're just hoping for a word, a word, a word, a word, a word. And if it, okay, I didn't get one from Prophet Joel. Let me go see what this one's saying today. I didn't get one from him. Let me go see what okay. When the Lord wants to give you a word, Trust me, you're not going to have to seek out the word. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with asking for a word. Hey, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at all. But please know this. When God wants to give you a prophetic word, you won't be able to hide from it. That thing will have gone forth uh, from the throne. And it's going to be like a, like one of those heat-seeking missiles. It's going to be it'll just find you until boom. Okay? And it will hit you. It will get to you. The Lord will make sure that it gets to you. So I wasn't even seeking a word. That's a word for somebody. But the moment uh, I received the first one, I will tell you this. I knew what I had been praying for. I knew what I was believing God for. I knew what I was asking for. And no, my life at the time was not hunky-dory. Uh, so, so no, that's not why I wasn't seeking a word. Because somebody right now, I just hear prophetically, ooh, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, there's somebody listening who says, well, you weren't seeking a word because you probably had everything awesome. No, honey, things were not all awesome at the time. But I understand that if I really need a word, I got my Bible, and the Bible is full of so many words, okay? Like, you can't, you can't say you need a word, but then your Bible is closed, all right? So come on, somebody. So I was living for the Lord. I was serving the Lord. I was running after God, mm -hmm. uh, being obedient, submitted to, to Christ Jesus. He was my Lord and my Savior. Some people only want a Savior. They don't want a Lord, all right? But, okay, and I knew what I had been praying for. And when, boom, that prophetic word began, got, got released to me, immediately I began living, speaking, and acting like it already came to pass. I said, all right, what do I need to have in place to show God that <laughs> I am ready, I can be trusted, I'm his girl. What do I need? What, what do I need to do? And I began to think, speak, walk, talk, live, move, breathe, like it came to pass. And for anybody who's wondering, yeah, it was all about my ministry. Okay. So I really just, I had no justification because outwardly the ministry didn't even really exist. All right. But I began to act as though it did. Watch this. And I also put some things in place. Okay. Start putting together a website. Opened up this Periscope channel. Nobody even used to listen to me, okay? <laughs> like, I would talk to empty room. But I began to put things in place because you must prepare for the manifestation of the word. Number one, it, 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 it displays your faith. Praise God. Number two, it shows the Lord that you are serious. You can be trusted. You're, you, you can be trusted with that blessing because you're already getting ready for it. It's not even here. You're already living and speaking and moving and breathing like it's manifested and it's not even here. But for the people who are also listening, when I say to begin to prepare for the manifestation of the word, that means clean up your act. If you have any sin in your life, if you have any known sin or disobedience, you've got to get that sin out. 
We have already seen, as in the case of former King Saul, that his disobedience and his sin caused the Lord to declare his prophecy null and void. And that man had the kingship yanked away from him and given to somebody else right in front of his face. You must get the sin out of your life. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, I hope somebody's putting up these scriptures, all right? In Revelation chapter 10, or I'm sorry, chapter 12, verse 10, the Bible said that the devil accuses us, us, God's people. He accuses us in the courts of heaven night and day. Listen, you cannot give the devil anything to accuse you over. We already know that his three-part agenda, kill, steal, destroy, John 10.10, 10, does not change. His mission in his pathetic existence, punk loser, sorry, his ex his whole mission in his punk washed up trying to be Isaiah 14, I mean, for him to be like that. Okay, his whole mission is to kill, steal, and destroy your life, your destiny, your blessing. And you cannot give that joker anything to accuse you of so that legally the Lord will either block or nullify your word. Don't give that joker anything to work with. And, and, and so that's why I really encourage people under the canopy of my ministry to live in a state of continual repentance. Can I tell you, and my husband will testify, if he's on the broadcast, you hear John? My husband will tell you that literally on a daily basis, usually when I first wake up, I say, Lord, forgive me for anything that I have done, thought, or said that displeased you, put distance in between us. Forgive me, Lord, of anything I've done, thought, or said, unknowingly or unknowingly, I repent, Lord. I repent. I'm a sinner. I repent. Now, I've learned, you know, the Lord expects us to sin. He does not expect any of us to be perfect. He knows that we're a sinner. And I've described sin before as a condition because that's the way the Lord revealed it to me. And it was revelation. Praise God. But he, he, he really showed me like, you know, you expect a cat to meow. I have a cat. Let me testify. Those animals meow. You expect a, a, a dog to bark. Mm -hmm. You expect a, a rose to smell fragrant. The Lord expects a sinner to inevitably, eventually sin. He knows that we're not perfect. He knows that we, we needed a savior. Come on, somebody. That's why he sent Jesus. But when you do sin, when you do fall, and the Bible says that we're all going to fall short of the glory of God. And when, not if, but when it happens, you repent immediately to the Lord, and you correct yourself. Amen. Because once again, the Lord does not need to see you perfect. He knows it's not possible. We're sinners. But he needs to see you trying. He needs to see you being honest with yourself. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Lord. He needs to see you being honest with yourself. He needs to see you taking some uh, initiative in your life. Then he'll know he's got somebody he can work with. Come on now. Then he knows he has somebody who's not just making excuses. That's a word for somebody. I'm sorry to tell you. I love you enough to tell you. You cannot continue making excuses for your own uh, poor behavior and poor decisions. There's no lie. This is a word. Oh, God, I didn't, I didn't expect this, but here it is. Listen to me carefully. It is not even about your ex anymore. God knows your ex was abusive. It is not what he did and how he was and what he pushed you to and how he treated He knows all of that, and I am not minimizing it. Listen to me. But you cannot uh, use that as your excuse forever. At some point, the Lord is going to need to see you say, God, you know that man did a number on me. Or sometimes it's a woman. God, you know they did a number on me. I need you more than ever. I am broken. I am angry. God, please, Lord, I need your help. Don't let me descend into bitterness. 
I'm going to obey you, God. I'm going to get into church. I'm going to get into fellowship. I'm going to begin to serve just like your word tells me to do. Oh, God, I'm going to begin making offerings. I'm going to begin tithing. I'm, going to, I'm not going to self-isolate. And so I just dwell on myself, God. I'm going to trust you, Father. I'm going to trust you. You made me, God. You understand the way my brain works. You understand my anatomy. You understand my biology. You understand my psychology. So if these things are what you're telling me to do, I'm going to trust you and do it. And when God sees you coming into that kind of obedience and submission, then he knows he can work with you. You're not perfect, but he knows he can work with you. And so for the person I was talking to, it is time to do just that. You cannot continue clinging to, to what happened because God is saying, while you're clinging, you're letting so much time go by. I would have had you heal by now. I would have had you heal by now. I don't dilly dally. I don't drag my feet. <laughs> I would have had you washed. What do they call it? My son used to do cars dolled up. I would have. I would have. I would have done what you through the wash, the car wash, the dolled up, the restoration. And you'd be good to go. So you got to come out of that place of just wallowing and come into a place of submission. Amen. Praise God. And you got to get the sin out. Don't give the devil that, that joker anything to accuse you with. Praise God. Now, many people do block the manifestation of their personal prophetic word by the presence of sin. You don't have to like it, but you just heard the truth. All right, praise God. So you need to begin obeying the Lord. Here's uh, the next point. You ready for this? And this is our final point, then we're done. That now when, after you've done all that, okay, you are, uh, you, you're coming into alignment with the Lord. You're obeying the Lord. Mm, you're beginning to prepare for the word. You begin to prepare for the word. Become the person you need to be. If that word hit your life today, would you be ready for it? One time I asked somebody, I said, listen, I know you want this right now. I know she was crying so bad, this poor baby. She was crying. Oh, she said, Joe, do you know when? Oh, do you know when? I said, let me ask you a question, sweetheart. If your doorbell was to ring right now and, and, and it was that blessing on your doorstep, are you ready? And she says, she's crying. She says, she says no. You got to prepare for the word so that the Lord knows that you are a ready vessel. You are a ready vessel to receive that thing that he wants to release to you. Hallelujah. Third and final point. Now you just got to trust the Lord's timing. We already established this very briefly, but I want to show you uh, how in-depth this actually gets. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, there's a time and a season for everything. A blessing given to you when you're not ready will feel like a curse. Trust me on that. But check this out. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. So there's two ways to wait. <laughs> there's two ways to I'm not saying that you can't be anxious or eager. Hey, listen, I, when I got my word, I was very anxious and very eager. I mean, if you want to know the truth, the second time the Lord told me, because it was a completely different person, it was the exact same word, I started literally pacing. I'm like, oh, oh snap, this is, this is about to happen. It's really going to happen. I was pacing in my house. So I'm not, uh, transparency is everything. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying that you can't be anxious and eagerly awaiting that word. But I am saying, according to this scripture here in Isaiah 40 and 31, there's two ways to wait. The one way to wait is to just be lackadaisical you're just sitting back you're not being aggressive you're not taking initiative you're, you're waiting but you're waiting passively and then there are those who wait upon the lord you continue to just stay connected to the lord you continue to run after jesus you continue to just love and serve and praise jesus amen and then the payout will be that you're going to be able to wait easier it's not going to become like something that just consumes you. God, this scripture here says God's going to renew your strength. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to run, not be weary, walk and not faint. The waiting will be easier if you stay close to the Lord. Don't sit back and just wait passively. Stay close to God. And you'll be surprised how much you're growing and learning and becoming and loving life while you wait. That's that's part of the one way that that scripture can manifest in your life. So I want to encourage you to stay busy while you wait. 
Stay busy. You're not just waiting once again for like that package to arrive by like a supernatural UPS system. You are staying busy. Second Peter 3 and 8 says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day. So it might seem to you like you've been waiting forever. But God is saying, listen, where I am, I have a completely different concept of time. It's not a long time whatsoever. I'm waiting till the opportune moment, the perfect moment, the ideal time when all conditions are correct. It only seems to you like it's taken forever. Trust me, this is not a long time because the way God sees time, it says right there in that scripture that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So it's really not a long time compared to your life, compared to the, the time frame on this thing. Galatians 4 and 4, I love this verse. Check this out. Galatians 4 and 4 says, this is powerful, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. When the fullness of the time was come, then God sent forth his son. There was a precise time. There was a precise moment. There was a schedule to that thing for Jesus to come. And they were awaiting the Messiah for what seemed like a very long time. And they come on somebody. Have you studied the scriptures? Have you read your Old Testament? They were, they were anxiously awaiting the arrival of the Messiah. They needed him. But the fullness of time had to come. The correct time had to come. There was a right time and a wrong time. There was a good time and a perfect time. The fullness of time had to come. And then the Lord said, all right, Jesus, you're on. Get down there. Go, go on. Okay, when the fullness of time came, it's the exact same way with you. We see there a powerful aspect, a powerful principle uh, on the way the Lord is regarding timing. There's a, there's a, there's a schedule to this thing. There's a, there's a system to this thing. There's a timing to this thing. You got to wait on the Lord and trust his timing. He is not going to give you something that you can't handle. He's not going to give you something too soon and risk you messing it up. Come, oh yeah, I said it. He's not going to give you something too soon and risk you messing it up. He's not going to give you something when you're in disobedience. Why in the world would he reward a disobedient child? Okay, so the fullness of time has to uh, come about and then the Lord will release it. Amen. Pray. Oh, I hope that helps somebody because I really believe that several people listening are going to be, uh, are waiting right now on the manifestation of a personal prophetic word. If you, if you want to, if you need to go back and listen to this again, write down the scriptures, look them up in your Bible, study them for yourself. And you're going to see how beautiful that, that this really is, that there is precision to this thing because God has created the manifestation cycle in a very loving way. He wants to maximize your chances for success. He wants to maximize your, your chances to really receive and benefit from the manifestation of his blessing in your life. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want to invite you to join me for the Wednesday morning prayer call. It's going to be the day after tomorrow. Every single Wednesday morning we get together. 7 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. I call it the Seek Him Early Prayer Call for obvious reasons because it's 7 o'clock in the morning, baby. So 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the information is on my website, but it's also on all of my social media sites. This is your time to just call in. You don't say anything. You let me pour into you. I'm, I'm being obedient. God told me to start doing these prayer calls, and I'm doing them, and they're beautiful. Praise God. Sometimes, I'm going to tell you, sometimes the Lord gives me a very personal prophetic word for somebody. I never know when it's going to happen and I never know who it's going to be for. When I hear the Holy Ghost just begin to show me something or tell me something, I just obediently repeat. So just know that uh, I'm going to be praying over you. I'm going to be prophesying over you. There's going to be a whole lot of Bible. Amen. And there may be some personal prophetic words for people who are going to be on the call. And if God wants you to receive a word, he'll make sure that you're on that call. Praise the Lord. So I invite you to join me and get the number and all the information on my website, also on my social media sites. Amen. Uh, check out the Wednesday word coming to YouTube every single Wednesday. I release a fresh prophetic 
rhema word. Uh, sometimes it's rhema, sometimes it's prophetic. The Lord tells me, amen. That's on YouTube every single Wednesday. If you have not yet gotten your copy of my new book, Stepping Into Favor, you got to come and get your signed copy. Every, uh, every book is uh, sent with a free bookmark. Amen. The Lord uh, does things at a high level. So I just want to, I'm just trying to be like my Lord. Uh, I'm trying to do things at a high level as well. And we are having a free webinar on July 3rd from 7 until 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be on YouTube Live. You don't need the book to come and benefit. I want to invite you to come with or without the book. If you have it, all the better. If you don't, no worries. I'm going to be dropping many, many, many nuggets so that you, that you can take, run with, and apply in your life right away. And you will uh, receive a shift in your finances if you apply these principles from the Bible. Amen. If you have a loved one who is in jail, in prison, in rehab, or living in a shelter, this is our free resource that we send to the facility within the United States. If, they live, if they're here in the U.S. and they're in jail, in rehab, in prison, or in a shelter, if you send us their information, their address, their facility name, we will send it on your behalf to them all across the United States and we do now we send them out weekly it's gotten to such a level that and this is called the the uh, operation lost souls uh, like in my ministry and now it's to the point where we got to send them weekly praise God and the um, post office sees us coming they're like oh no here come them people with books but that's fine if you would love us if you would like us to send one to uh, your loved one who's incarcerated or in rehab or in a shelter we would be honored to do so amen it's a book about having a relationship with Christ Jesus at the end we offer them a free bible if they want a bible they can let us know and we send one uh, to them as well that's all I have for you on today. I pray this blessed you. I love you all with the love of Jesus. This will be your last chance to share. Swipe right on an iPhone. Swipe up on an Android. That will allow you to share on all the platforms. And I thank you for the shares. Come follow me on, follow me here, number one. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. If you just pop in my name, it'll come up. I love you all very much. I'm praying for you. And if you do need prayer, send us a prayer request via the link in my bio. We pray for each and every person who uh, asks us to. Love you. I'll see you next time. Until then, God bless you.